We have a full 30-minute show of nothing but science and weather tonight, right after News 10 at 10. KWTX News 10 this morning. Storms hit South Texas ahead of Tropical Storm Barrel. How coastal cities are bracing for the expected hurricane. And in Central Texas, we have a flood watch that goes in effect tomorrow. Same reason, Barrel's going to be bringing heavy rainfall into parts of the area. We'll talk more about our local impacts coming up this morning. And one Waco woman is uh, celebrating her 104th birthday, and her daughter is reaching out to the community to help her celebrate. I'll tell you more coming up. And later, how these Central Texas law enforcement officers spent their weekend helping out a member of their community with yard work. This is KWTX News 10. Good. Happy Sunday. I'm Allie Cadabar, joined by our first alert meteorologist, Camille Hawksworth. And Camille, it kind of felt a little muggy outside, a little hot. I know, Allie, that's that tropical moisture mm, already surging in. Yes. yes, it is going to be a little bit more warm this morning. The dew points have come up about 5 to 10 degrees. You're waking up to a beautiful day, though. The sun okay. is getting going, and temperatures are into the 70s across most of the area. Uh, close to 80 degrees already in Corsicana, so it's going to continue to warm up from there. Uh, it is is going to stay warm, hot, dry, and humid throughout the day. Again, that dew point change has come up quite a bit in just 24 hours, so that's already ahead of what will be barrel coming in tomorrow. So for today, it's all about the heat. It's all about the humidity. We should stay dry, and then, of course, those impacts coming in with barrel as early as tomorrow. But we'll talk a lot more about barrel coming up later on in the show. Now that's what areas of Houston experienced this weekend ahead of that tropical storm barrels landfall. You can see heavy rains flooded streets causing cars to move very, very slow. This is just a glimpse of what people in South Texas could see a tropical storm barrel is expected to strengthen and make landfall late tonight through tomorrow. Many Southeast Texas schools have already announced closures and many voluntary evacuation orders are in place for coastal cities. That's all in anticipation for that storm. Many residents are boarding up their houses and businesses this weekend in the coast. However, down on the beach, it looked like a normal day to many locals and tourists. A local business owner on the beach in Corpus Christi says the holiday weekend has continued to be bustling every day, and Beryl's expected landfall has not affected many of her customers. Meanwhile, some visitors do have concerns, but are just staying updated on Beryl's path while enjoying the rest of their vacation. This is a very typical crowd this time of year. It was actually even more crowded yesterday. There was some worry. I think my mom was like ready to pack yesterday. Just uh, we were here with some friends and they actually canceled their last night. Other businesses say they will not close until they have to, while some plan to board up windows and bring chairs inside. Now, the state's medical response team is already deployed ahead of barrel. The Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, also known as STRAC, deploys ambulances, doctors, and mobile medical units all around the state. The Texas Emergency Medical Task Force, or the EMTF, is strictly disaster medicine. When we deploy people out the door, we deploy uh, critical care ICU ER nurses, and we deploy uh, critical care or uh, ER physicians along with our paramedics. Teams are already stationed with mobile hospitals ready to assist with what, whatever's needed. Meanwhile, acting Governor Dan Patrick added 81 counties to the Hurricane Barrel Disaster Declaration Saturday. This includes five counties here in Central Texas. Take a look at those on your screen. That includes Bell County, Falls, Hayes, McLennan, and Milam counties. And now we want to bring in our first alert meteorologist, Camille Hawksworth. Camille, we know that the coast will see the most impacts from the storm, but some central Texas counties are on that de disaster declaration list. So have new developments overnight changed Barrel's impact on 
on us. Yeah, Allie, new overnight, there have really not been any significant changes to Barrel's track, and it's still actually a tropical storm. That said, we do still anticipate it to continue to move over the open warm waters of the Gulf, and it's still likely going to be a hurricane just before making landfall late tonight, early tomorrow morning. That time frame looks to be about 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. down along the Texas coast. And the National Hurricane Center, again, the track looks very similar to what it had last night. Again, still strengthening just before making landfall and then eventually pushing towards the north into the east. East of Central Texas has the potential to see heavy rainfall before sliding up even more so towards the north. Uh, it'll make it all the way impacts up towards the Great Lakes into Michigan as well, where they will see heavy rainfall uh, throughout the week. So we expect to see this system impacting our weather, especially tomorrow. And then eventually for areas east of our, us, they will see the impacts throughout the week. For tomorrow, we do have a first alert weather day in place. The heavy rainfall potential is the biggest concern, but we'll also have those strong winds and can't roll out a straight tornado and the outer bands of barrel as it pushes inland. So that's what we're going to be tracking all day throughout the day tomorrow. All of Central Texas needs to be weather aware tomorrow, although the biggest impacts will likely be along an east of I-35. And of course, tomorrow is the day that we're watching out for for that heavy rainfall to move in. The further west you are, the smaller those rain totals should be. The further east you are, we'll see multiple inches of rainfall and flooding remains the biggest concern. Thank you, Camille. This Temple child you see right here is now back with his custodial parents this morning. Temple police spent Saturday searching for this boy who they believe was abducted by his non-custodial parent. That's 26-year-old Autumn Davis you see on your right and also 5-year-old Gus Spearman on the left. Police say they spoke with Spearman's father who said the mother, Davis, does not have custody of the child but took the boy during a super visitation. The boy is back home with his father this morning. Now, Colleen police are investigating a single vehicle crash that left one man dead early Saturday morning. You might have noticed police presence in this area that you see. It happened in, on the East Central Texas Expressway on a frontage road off Interstate 14. That's near Seton Medical Center. The early investigation revealed that the driver, a 31 year old man, drove his Pontiac sedan off the road while going too fast. That then then caused the car to roll multiple times. The driver was pronounced dead shortly after police got there. They are still working to notify his family. Now, this morning, officials across Central Texas are warning residents to be cautious of starting wildfires. Now, this behind me is a grass fire off of I-35 in Robinson less than 24 hours ago. Fire officials say that the fire was about 100 yards by 30 yards. They say it only took them about 15 minutes to get things under control, and they believe it could have been started with a cigarette bud or a chain from a trailer, but they say it's hard to determine determine the calls in these cases. Now, volunteer fire departments in Bosque County have also been busy responding to several hay baler and grass fires this week. It says these fires spread slow, but that will change as we inch deeper into the summer. Both departments remind drivers to check to make sure they are not dragging metal or chains and to avoid throwing cigarette buds out the window. Now, the water woes in Marlin continue this morning as another boil water notice was issued yesterday for anyone who relies on the city's public water systems. Now, the city posted on Facebook saying due to the low pressure in the distribution lines, the boil water notice was required by the Texas Commission Environmental Quality. So, you will need to boil your water for washing your hands and face, brushing your teeth and drinking. Now, one, one woman who was born and raised in Waco is turning 104 next week, and her daughter is calling out to the community for her birthday present. News 10's Jessica Rajkumar spoke with the daughter of Rosetta Stone and shares how all she wants for her birthday are letters from loved ones. Such a cute story, Jess. Yes, Allie, good morning. So while she traveled around the country to raise her kids, Waco resident Rosetta Stone, Rosetta Stone is turning 104 on 
on July 20th, and her daughter took to Facebook to plan her birthday surprise. When asked what she wanted for her birthday, Miss Stone could have asked for a fancy bag or designer clothes, but all she wanted was letters in her mailbox. So her daughter, Marsha Maynard Neal, took to, the, took to Facebook to ask the community to wish her mom. And the post blew up, getting over 300 comments agreeing to send her mail or to send her wishes through the mail. Um, this person shared it and that person shared it. It's just, she was like, oh my goodness. I don't know if she really knew the magnitude of it, but she will when she starts seeing the cards. I'm sure she's going to be like, what? Neil says that she will show her mom the letters as they come in. So if you know Miss Rosetta and want to send her a card, her birthday is on July 20th, so you have until then. And we will have a link to Neil's Facebook post soon up on our website. Reporting in studio, Jessica Rajkumar, KWTX News 10. That's so sweet. I want to send her a letter. But time right now, it is 7:10. After the break, how the Temple community is honoring two teens who were killed in a car crash earlier this week. Plus, how people in Belton spent the weekend beating that heat, supporting a good cause.